indicators of the best way to understand crowd sentiment, we're going to use this training to explain our main indicators on our charts and what they specifically do for you in understanding what the crowd, what the market is thinking about particular stocks and ETFs. Now, indicators interpret varying aspects of crowd sentiment. There are dozens of indicators, each of them typically a fairly simple arithmetic formula that is depicted graphically on the charts, such as the charts that we use that are what you see before you under our form of technical analysis. We also refer to that as charting. We, of course, use Bollinger Bands. We use crossovers. We use price percent oscillators. We use trend lines. We use derivative oscillators. All sorts of very helpful things. Now, We'll go through each one of the main ones that we use and discuss those in order. The first are trend lines. They typically show us <clears throat> weakening or building trends. And as we focus on those trend lines, the more vertical they are, of course, the more the trend is moving in that direction. The more candlesticks that you can connect together the better. We typically like to see a strong trend line connecting three, at least three candlesticks. Now, of course, you've got to have two to actually draw a trend line, but we use them day in and day out to help us see just how strong trends are and whether or not those trends are coming to an end and the candle is violating the trend line. The next thing that we look at are Heikenashi candlesticks. Now, they're the traditional Japanese candlesticks. They, they both show, just like Heikenashi, which means in Japanese, average pace, I'm told. I don't speak Japanese, but that's what I'm told that means. Our candlesticks are a little different than the typical high open, low close. But regardless of the candlesticks that you use, they show slowing or accelerating movement of price. When we have green open box candles, they typically are the strongest candles that we have for up movement. No wicks on the bottom, an open box green candlestick, and then a wick on the top. And again, those are typically our strongest up-moving candles. Our strongest down-moving candles are solid red down candles. We have cautionary candles such as open box red candles or solid green candles, again showing deceleration and down movement. And the open box red candle shows a deceleration in up movement. So again, we use these candles all the time to help us see if price is slowing or accelerating. The next thing that we look at are Bollinger Bands. Now, they are depicted on our charts as dashed lines, and inside those lines is a colored blue area. The Bollinger Bands are the outside lines. Bollinger Bands are nothing more than volatility bands. And what they show you whether volatility is going up or down. How do they show you that? The farther apart the Bollinger Bands get, the more volatility there is, the more price movement. They widen as price changes and gets stronger as far as the volatility itself goes. You can see on this gold chart how gold got pinched as it flattened in its price. The Bollinger Bands got closer and closer together. Market sentiment was not a lot of volatility. Then when the price of gold shot off, guess what happened? The Bollinger Bands widened more and more and more as price continued to move. So again, Bollinger Bands help you understand the volatility that the market is seeing, that you're seeing in the marketplace. Now, our biggest number one indicator that we use time and time again for our vertical crossovers is the price percent oscillator. 
Now the price percent oscillator is depicted on our charts at the bottom half of the charts as a solid blue line. It also has a red signal line <clears throat> that is used to give us signals. We have weekly vertical crossovers on the weekly chart when the solid blue line crosses over the red line going up. That is a strong move for continued up movement in the market and the opposite when it crosses over going down. Now, the price percent oscillator is really nothing more than the relationship between two moving averages. And through this price percent oscillator, we're able to confirm trend direction or divergences, and that basically is a warning of a trend reversal. That happens when you have a crossover, the red signal line going down, and of course the confirmed change in trend direction going up is when you have a crossover of the blue price percent oscillator over the red signal line going up. That is what the price percent oscillator shows us as far as investor sentiment. Now what's very interesting about the price percent oscillator, it is the MACD put into a percentage basis. So since it's done that way, it allows us to compare the performance of stocks within a sector or sectors to indexes, and that's very important. And that's why we use the price percent oscillator versus the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence oscillator. So now we'll keep moving on. The next is the derivative oscillator. Now the derivative oscillator is a more advanced version of the relative strength index. And it allows us to see market sentiment of overbought or oversold conditions. On our chart, it is depicted as light green and light red boxes on the bottom half of our chart. And again, we use these to help us because the price percent oscillator, it does not allow us to see overbought and oversold conditions that is not what it is. It is, a, it is a lagging indicator, whereas the relative strength index, hence the derivative oscillator, allows us to be able to see, again, a different type of market sentiment. Positive readings are bullish. Negative readings are bearish. Crossovers of the zero line indicate strong changes in sentiment. And we look for those we particularly like when they cross over at the same time as the price percent oscillator crosses over. But nonetheless, when we're looking at the derivative oscillator in and of itself, they tend to show us changes in sentiment between overbought and oversold conditions. Now, this oscillator is highly sensitive to short-term time frames. So we always suggest, uh, with all of our various indicators, but this one in particular, a wide band of settings to make full use of what the derivative oscillator is actually telling you. Now, the interesting thing about all of these indicators is that each of them gives us a unique interpretation of crowd sentiment relative to each time frame in which we view these various indicators. And the skill of the trader has to be used to decipher all this information and put it together in order to develop an overall view of the market in order to make effective trading decisions. No single indicator measures everything. We must understand all the aspects of crowd sentiment represented by each indicator, put them all together to help us understand what's going on in the market and make the best decisions for our practice trades so that we enter them and exit them at the right times. And again, we on a daily basis follow these charts. On a daily basis, we look at all the various time frames and we want to do everything we can to understand what all of these indicators are telling us is going on in the market 
in each time frame, giving us an idea of what is happening with investor and or market sentiment. Now, as Albert Einstein told us, any fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. Here at Charting Wealth, every day we are charting these markets. We want you to practice trade with us continually. Practice to show yourself approved. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. That's what it takes, my friends. A little bit of time every day. You can learn this. You can do this. God bless. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.